Welcome to St John's Cathedral here in Oban and to this celebration of Holy Communion. Wherever you are, you are welcome to join us as the Scottish Episcopal Church as we celebrate in this way and we make our spiritual communion together. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by the Holy Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. May we find peace in your service, and in the world to come, see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavishes on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time 
to gather up all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purposes of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to Christ our Saviour. King Herod heard of the healings and other miracles for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed back in to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptizer on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today, I have a few words to say about dancing, about death, and about discipleship. Today's Gospel tells us of the dance of Herod's daughter, usually identified as Salome. The story has developed into her dance of the seven veils, as in Oscar Wilde's play and Richard Strauss's opera. Now, dancing has tended to have a rather bad press in Christian history. John Chrysostom, the 4th century church father, stated, Wherever there is a dance, the devil is also present. But why do we dance? Surely we dance, and if you haven't, I'd recommend it. We're expressing ourselves, we're losing our inhibitions. We're taking part in something. We're revealing ourselves, if you like. We're showing what we're really like. It may be alone, as you bop along in your room with your headphones on during lockdown, or it may be together. It may be 
precisely choreographed, it may be totally spontaneous, but we dance for a reason. Salome danced her dance to seduce, not just in an obvious sexual way, but simply to get her way. She beguiled her father, carried out her mother's sinister wishes, and caused the murder of John the Baptist. When we dance, we express the thing that possesses us most. We show our true desires and our true selves. There's a story in the Bible of King David where, as he delighted in the Ark of the Covenant entering Jerusalem, he was dancing before the Lord with all his might. That's what possessed him. That's what he really cared about right then. And so he danced. One of the consequences of following Jesus is like dancing. By which I mean we have to show ourselves, be ourselves, express ourselves. Our movements may be clumsy, we may feel embarrassed or think we embarrass others. Some people won't like it. When Saul's daughter, Saul was the king David had deposed, when she saw David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. We may not think of John the Baptist as dancing, it's not the most obvious image we have of him, but he, as not only a forerunner, but also a follower of Jesus, moved with the music, as it were. Not for him to be a man for all seasons, he stood up to Herod, and it cost him his life. We're reminded that if we wish to be disciples of Jesus, real followers who bring his good news, then there are consequences. And another of those consequences is not just dancing, but death. John the Baptist took a courageous stand against a despot and was murdered. Christians aren't just those who follow or try to follow the teachings of Jesus. We're followers of Jesus. In our baptism, we enter into the new life Jesus offers. We're born again. Our bodies haven't yet caught up, but in our very, our true selves, we have already died with Christ. If the dance expresses what we're really about, it exposes us, as did Salome, in not just exposing her body, but showing her treachery and the beastliness of Herod's court, as indeed did David dancing, showing his devotion. It exposes us, and if we act in ways that show what we truly believe, then who's to say what might happen? It was C.S. Lewis who said, you never know how much you really believe anything until its truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life and death for you. Being a follower of Jesus was a matter of life and death for John the Baptist, and he knew, in the end, what he'd choose if he had to. God save us from that choice, even as many of our brothers and sisters face it today elsewhere in this world. Today's Gospel begins with the interesting remark that people thought John the Baptist had returned because of what Jesus was doing. Another way of putting that, of course, is to know that there was a shared identity of behaviour, of character, of mission between these two. That, although he started first, he, John, was a disciple of Jesus. He behaved in the Jesus way. This sad tale reminds us that just as sometimes the reality, but always the metaphor or image of dancing, expresses what's really important to us, so does that for which we're willing to die. In many churches and cathedrals last week, we heard Jesus sending out the disciples as a group of twelve apostles with a mission, a mission of repentance, which means turning around, and of being sent out with few resources. Next week, 
Well, here with the bounty of Jesus, as he takes our few resources and multiplies them beyond measure in the feeding of 5,000. And in between, in between, we have this story, simply explaining a comment about the death of John the Baptist. But it's one which sets the commission of Jesus in the context of ordinary earthly living and reminds us of the consequences of following Jesus. The 20th century dancer and choreographer Merce Cunningham once said, You have to love dancing to stick to it. It gives you nothing back. No manuscripts to store away. No paintings to show on walls and maybe hang in museums. No poems to be printed and sold. Nothing. Nothing but that single fleeting moment when you feel alive. Or as the hymn writer Sidney Carter puts it, in Jesus' words for John the Baptist and for you and for me, words about dancing and death and discipleship. They cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that will never, never die. I'll live in you if you'll live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our faith together. Do you believe in God the Creator who made the world? I believe. Do you believe in God the Saviour who redeemed humanity? I believe. Do you believe in God the Sanctifier who gives life to God's people? I believe. We bring to God our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Through Jesus, whom we confess as Lord, we give thanks and praise to the Father, calling on God, who is judge of all. Father, your kingdom come. Father, your kingdom come. For all the peoples of the world, that they may know you as the God of peace, especially for areas of this world where there is conflict between nations and civil strife within. We pray to you, O Lord. Father, your kingdom come. Father, your kingdom come. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for nations, for leaders and governments, that integrity may mark all their dealings we pray to you, O Lord. Father, your kingdom come. Father, your kingdom come. For all who labour for righteousness, that your presence and help may give them courage. For those who work within the National Health Service and other agencies of care, we pray to you, O Lord, Father, your kingdom come. Father, your kingdom come. For communities torn by dissension and strife, that your forgiveness may bring them healing. For peoples divided by political and religious creed, and for all households divided, we pray to you, O Lord, Father, your kingdom come. Father, your kingdom come. For the anxious, the lonely, the bereaved, that consolation and peace may be theirs. For those who mourn the loss of loved ones. For those who are preparing to die. We pray to you, O Lord. Father, your kingdom come. Father, your kingdom come. For the church, your household and family, 
that she may be firm in the confession of her hope for our own communities of faith and for the life and witness of this cathedral of St John. We pray to you, O Lord. Father, your kingdom come. Father, your kingdom come. For all bishops and pastors, for all those who minister within the church, and for all who bear Christ's name, that our lives may proclaim your glory, we pray to you, O Lord. Father, your kingdom come. Father, your kingdom come. For those who are separated from us by death, that theirs may be the kingdom which is unshakable. For our own dearly departed loved ones, for those who have recently died and those whose anniversary of death falls at this time, we pray to you, O Lord. Father, your kingdom come. Father, your kingdom come. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make us perfect in all goodness to do your will and to be what you would have us be. Through him to whom be glory forever, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts we give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son born in human flesh. He is the Word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power, you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper he took the cup, he offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. 
Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by your Spirit's life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptised into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, on honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Christ invites us to his table and through our spiritual communion today we are able to receive of God's love. God of unending love, you are present to us in word and sacrament with all around the world who gather to worship. I offer you my praise and thanksgiving. And though I cannot eat the bread of God or drink the royal wine of heaven, I pray that I may know the foundation of your love drench my heart and your incarnate presence encompass me behind and before, that through the power of your spirit I may rejoice in the sure and certain hope that I abide in your wondrous love now and for all eternity. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Give thanks to our gracious God, whose mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Father, your steadfast purpose is the completion of all things in your Son. May we who have received the pledges of the kingdom live by faith, walk in hope, and be renewed in love until the world reflects your glory and you are all in all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.